What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. Apparently John Wall and the Rockets are working on a way of getting him out of there. I don't know how possible that's going to be. It's going to be really tough. But we are going to be doing a Houston Rockets rebuild today. Guys, I know I've been saying this for like the last three videos, but man, I'm not even kidding. We are so, so close to 20,000 subs. If you aren't a part of that 20k yet, go ahead hit that sub button. Help me out here. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Also drop a like. The Houston Rockets are a team I'm very, very excited to watch this season, to be honest with you. I love the idea of a Jalen Green, Kevin Porter Jr. backcourt. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Overall, this team just has a lot of good players, a lot of young players that I think are going to be, like like I said, a lot of fun to watch. But John Wall is a guy, a report came out today, uh, that he is apparently... You know, they're trying to work out a way where he he won't be playing for the Rockets at all this season, it seems like, but they're going to try to get him out of here. How possible is a trade? I have no idea, man. Like, get rid of John Wall isn't going to be the easiest thing in the world for the Houston Rockets. Uh, I already saw Matt on Twitter say that they're probably going to have to buy him out, and I agree. They're probably going to eventually have to buy him out. Now, how does that look? I have no idea. Um, some people were also tweeting. I think, like, Mazda was tweeting about, what is the best destinations for John Wall? And I saw some people commenting, Clippers, Celtics, and then maybe there's some other teams out there that you may think is better for John Wall. I don't know. But the goal is to get rid of John Wall, of course. Of also, before we uh, get into the trades and all that, some people were telling me uh, they weren't enjoying the crazy realist or crazy unrealistic rebuilds. So I'm going to try not to go too crazy. I know in the last video, I was like just cheesing the hell out of 2K. So I'll try to tone that down a little bit. Uh, but we will get into some ultra, ultra realistic rebuilds like later on in 2K. But for now, I just wanted to... Mix it up with some fantasy style here and there. The first offer I see that I can finally or somehow maybe get away with is getting rid of John Wall and sending him into Oklahoma City and then maybe Oklahoma City buys him out. I don't know. I would just buy him out in 2K, but I feel like, uh, and you know what I could do is I could just change his salary and then like release him because I feel like obviously if I bought him out now, his salary would count against me like crazy and I don't really want to do that. Or we could just, you know, send him to Oklahoma City. It's not our problem. Of course, they're not going to give us, uh, Alexej Pokoshevsky, or however you say his name, but they could give me Mike Muscala. So let's try to uh, rework this trade. So the Thunder get, take him on, but of course, in this situation, they would just be buying him out and they don't care because they're just, they just don't. But I mean, they've already bought Kim Walker, so don't really how well that would uh, work out. But at the end of the day, uh, I think if the Thunder were going to take him, obviously, they're going to want some picks. So uh, we can give them like this 2022 pick and then maybe like a 2025 and they get two first round picks. So we get rid of John Wall's contract or just something along the lines of that. Thunder take him on. We don't have to worry about him anymore. So just like that, John Wall is gone and now the roster has opened up a lot. And since this team is young, I don't think I'm going to do anything else this season. We got rid of John Wall. So I just kind of want to see what keep KPJ, Jalen Green, J. Shot Tate, Kenyon Martin Jr., Christian Wood, what a starting five like that would look like. I think every time I've simulated in 2K in the first season, I've like almost always made the playoffs. So I think this season there's a chance that obviously we're going to miss it. So uh, once we miss the playoffs, we'll make our changes from there. But I also kind of just want to see how Jalen Green and KPJ uh, do together, how the simulation goes, what the stats look like. And then, of course, we'll make our moves from there. But for now, just kind of want to sit back, relax, and uh, eat some popcorn maybe and just watch 2K do its thing, I guess. At the end of the year, we were very bad, which is what I expected, obviously. So we're going to go ahead and simulate these playoffs. And I kind of want to see what our stats look like as well. But we have the Boston Celtics going all the way to win the championship. But as far as our stats were concerned, uh, we had uh, 21 from Christian Wood. Okay, 18 from uh, Kevin Porter Jr., 18 from Eric Gordon, and 17 from Jalen Green. So I liked how uh, Kevin Porter Jr. and Jalen Green performed. Obviously, Eric Gordon was taking a lot of the scoring. And he actually had a really good year. So trading him would probably be a lot easier now in the offseason because I think a team would like to see or uh, definitely would have liked what they've saw out of Eric Gordon if he averaged like 18 points that'd be awesome for us so we're gonna go ahead though get in this offseason of course make some more trades but the first step is to draft lottery because we're literally the 15th seed out west so hopefully that lands us like a very very good pick and we get lucky here so um, as far as uh, watching this, I don't really know how uh, fast this goes, so I don't think I'm going to watch it. Uh, we end up with the number one pick. That is like literally a best case scenario, and I couldn't be happier with that. So like I already kind of mentioned, we are going to be trading Eric Gordon 
uh, to whatever team it may be. I don't know yet. Uh, I do see like this offer from Chicago, which is a huge salary dump. Now, we would be getting rid of his whole contract, but Eric Gordon had such a good year. I feel like I could get a pick for him. So, although I'm not obviously doing realistic, I just kind of want to, you know, not go too crazy out of the realm of possibility. But uh, I guess I will do that Chicago Bulls one where they just take him on. He'll be a nice uh, backup shooting guard for them, and we just get uh, a salary dump, and they take on a second round, or they, yeah, they take a second round pick, and we get a couple couple of uh, guys that aren't going to matter too much but we also have this number one pick in the draft and then i don't think yeah we only had number one in this draft so um, as far as what they think we should be taking we got paulo bonchero at the top of the board Jaden hardy jay holmgren uh, jalen duran so i think i mean taking a big man would be uh you know probably obvious here just because uh, we already have a nice backcourt that we want to kind of rely on for the future and we have christian wood who uh is going to be here but for how long we don't know uh so let's go ahead and see what our best decision would be at this number one pick of course i'm thinking about chet holmgren i think that'd be a lot of fun but uh uh, I don't know. Is Paulo Banchero better, guys? I actually have no idea. I don't watch. Uh, I, I don't know if these two have even played a single college game. I don't think so. Uh, but we'll kind of see how that goes. I guess I'm going to go ahead and change it up and draft Paulo and kind of see if that was a good decision. He was 80 overall. Chet Holmgren was 80 overall. So I don't think I could have gone wrong either way. But I'm happy with that decision. And uh, now we can kind of figure out if we want to just move Christian Woods to the four or if we want to trade him. We'll see. So right now, if I did move Christian Wood to the power forward, our starting lineup would be Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, Jay Sean Tate, Christian Wood, and Paulo Bonturo, which I'm totally cool with running. Uh, Christian Wood definitely could play the power forward. I just don't know if I want it to be like that long term. I guess we could like definitely sign some depth. Uh, Kenny Martin Jr. is going to be nice. Daniel Tyus, as cool as he is, I don't think we really need him as a backup power forward just because we already have uh, you know Gabriel Deck and Kenyon Martin Jr. here. So uh, I definitely could use some backups in Alperin. Uh, uh, Shagoon or however you say his name. I definitely like him as a backup center as well And then uh, small four Dave Nwamba is fine with me for now So I guess we could use a backcourt uh, Backup, but I do like Josh Christopher his overall isn't that great in 2k, but I do like him But I guess for now we'll probably trade Daniel Tyus. Maybe uh, Maybe uh, who else was I thinking about trading probably David Nwamba? I don't know. We'll figure it out We're gonna make uh, a real quick trade though just for some depth that we kind of round up the roster a little bit more I think this Celtics trade gives us the best of both worlds as we get a backup point guard in Peyton Pritchard and also a uh, Project in Aaron Naismith who I think could be very good this next upcoming season And of course in Houston he could blossom as well Maybe even as a potential starter small forward one day So I do like the idea of uh, Aaron Naismith being a backup small forward for now and of course you got Peyton Pritchard So really like how that went. Uh, I'm I'm actually content with what we got and i am ready to run it back for season two obviously we still could not be a good team and that's totally fine with me i'm definitely content on being patient with this team we are in a rebuilding state of course this team just came off of trading james harden away so it does make sense that this team might not be that great for a while but uh it's fine christian wood is only an 82 overall as well john green's already developed into an 84 and kevin porter jr is an 80 so i like where this is going so far we're gonna have a really nice starting five it should be a lot of fun to watch and hopefully in this uh season number two Maybe we make some progression. Maybe we're still in the lottery. And who knows? Maybe we even make the freaking playoffs. You never know with this game. Since Christian Wood is only on a one-year deal and uh, we already have enough scoring in the lineup, I am going to be trading him to the Orlando Magic for Jonathan Isaac, who is going to be a nice defensive player to have in our starting five and who's 25 years old. So he's two years younger than Christian Wood. So that also kind of uh, helps my idea as well. I mean, they're pretty much the same overall. Christian Wood has one year left in his deal, though. Jonathan Isaac has three. You know, Isaac makes like three more million, but I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world. With that, this would be our new updated rotation. I think Jonathan Isaac fits a little bit better at that power forward spot than Christian Wood did. Because uh, I like Christian Wood more as a center, a modern day center more than a power forward. But he could play it, don't get me wrong. I just uh, love the idea of him playing center more uh, for some other team. So, Isaac at the power forward, I'm content with that. We're only the 13th seed. I don't think we're winning a ton of games. But at the end of the day, as long as we're making some progress, that's all that matters. Look at John Wall. The man didn't get bought out, but hey, he's winning six man of the year on the Oklahoma City Thunder. The man is still balling, even with this new team. So, again, we didn't make the postseason. We're the 14th seed. So, yeah, we got better by one seed. I mean, I'll take it. It is progress still, right? So, 22 from Jalen Green, though. 17 and a half from Kevin Porter Jr. 13 from Paulo. And then uh, 11, uh, 10, 10. Of course, this team is going to get keep getting better and better, though. So, I'm not too upset about it. Of course, I do want to make the playoffs in this video. But we got the Atlanta Hawks going all the way to win the championship good for them okay now we got another draft lottery on our hands so how is this going to look is the question so we are projected the 14th pick we're also projected um 
pick number three so it's a swap okay so hopefully of course we get the higher pick uh we should i would imagine because of the james harden trade but we'll see uh it looks like we are going to be getting pick number six okay so we get pick number six and that's get number 13 so we have the six pick in the draft so once again we are going to be drafting high and honestly it would be kind of interesting if i could find a way to trade up and get uh amani bates out of this draft just because i mean i got really nothing to lose at this point if we can make that trade get to number one pick and draft amani bates just just because having Amani Bates paired up with Jalen Green and Kevin Porter Jr. in my head just sounds like so much fun. It's not even funny. So if the Blazers would be willing to give me the number one pick, I'm definitely going to find a way to try to get it done. See, the Portland Trailblazers weren't really giving me the number one pick, but Amani Bates was projected to go number two. So hopefully if I grab the number two pick from Indiana, that might be just fine. I don't really necessarily want to trade Jonathan Isaac, but I really have nothing else to offer in this trade unless if they're just going to be willing to take on a lot of my picks, which I don't love the idea of trading all my picks, but I mean, okay, they agree. So we only traded a few. That's fine with me. We get the number two pick and hopefully a money base does not go number one because that would be worst case scenario, but I think we can trade for him if, if needed. So number one, who's going to go poor and trailblazer select. Hopefully it's Victor. Hopefully they take Victor off the board and yes there we go so it kind of worked out only trade for number two they get the center of victor i can't even say his last name but i i know this guy's supposed to be a beast though i know that a lot of people or some people have been commenting about me uh doing a potential rebuild on him so that we'll have to see what he's all about but with this number two pick of course we're going to be taking amani bates so we come out of the draft with the Monty Bates and the player options. We have Jalen Green, Peyton Pritchard, Kenyon Martin Jr., Alperin Shagoon, Osman Gruba, Gabriel Dake, of course, or Deck. I, I don't know what the hell I just said, but uh, that's what I get for talking fast, right? All right, boom. We got all that signed and then qualifying offers, Kevin Porter Jr., Jay Sean Tate. So except, of course, uh, both of those. And then for free agency, we have Kevin Porter Jr., who's a free agent. He is restricted. Of course, I want him, and uh, he's restricted as well. And then not Jalen Green, but Javante Green is also an unrestricted free agent. So Jay Green, definitely a little scary looking at that for a second, but we're good. So uh, Jalen Green, Josh Christopher is developing. That's good. Uh, Monty Bates, of course, going to be taking over that new small forward spot. And then Jonathan Isaac, Kenny Martin Jr., and then Paulo Bonchoro and Opera and Shagoon. I'm hoping those two just continue to develop. So at this point, I think I really just kind of want to wait on uh, one of these guys getting a contract and i'm gonna uh either offer it to them yeah let's just go ahead and give them their money so i'm gonna go ahead and give kevin porter jr an extension and honestly at that rate if kevin porter jr turns into a 25 point per game score or just anything i don't know if he'll get that high but if he turns into like a i don't know 20 getting him for 16 million is kind of a steal so i'm definitely okay with that and of course we are going to sign jay sean tate as well to a contract so we'll have both those guys coming back it's going to be kind of the same song and dance as far as the roster is concerned but i'm just hoping to develop just continue our development just continues to kind of push us towards that upper edge of being a good team in the west and we can finally make the postseason sometime in this video this year, Trey Young wins MVP. Victor, whoever that guy's last name is, wins Rookie of the Year for the Portland Trailblazers. Six man goes to Markel Fultz, Giannis Defensive Player of the Year. Jovic, not Jokic, is your most improved, and Dwayne Casey is your Coach of the Year. Nice. Here were the player stats as Jalen Green led the way with 26 points per game. The man is a 90 overall, and then we got Kevin Porter Jr. right behind him. 18 from Amani Bates, 16 for Paul Bonchero. So I, I kind of love of how we've drafted so far. Jay Sean Tate, Kenny Martin Jr., Alpern Shagoon are finally starting to develop a little bit. Isaac, 7.5, Payne Burchard, uh, 7.2, and now we get to play whoever comes out of the play-in. And of course, we got Detroit on the other side of things who drafted Kate Cunningham, number one, of course, uh, passed on Jalen Green. So it'd be kind of entertaining as hell if we were able to get these two in the NBA finals but i don't know how possible it's going to be but we do get the denver nuggets who could be a tough matchup they have Jokic, of course uh no they don't actually so Jokic is gone so it is very possible that we could beat this team so in current round against uh denver and we beat them in five and just like that we're in the second round playing the dallas mavericks the dallas mavericks have luca bruce brown tim hardaway jabari smith vucevic jalen brunson moses brown and tyrell terry so uh so many current round against uh dallas we're down three to one detroit on the other side is, uh, other side of things is up two to one but uh is there a possibility that we could find a way to f you know crawl back into this series because like i said it would be so much fun if we could like literally make this a rockets pistons finals in this third season but doesn't 
doesn't look like it's gonna happen. It looks like Dallas is gonna spoil that maybe for us. It is close one. And hey, it's not over yet. 133 to 140. So I mean, it is possible we could make this comeback. So I am gonna have to adjust rotation looks like. Let's go ahead and make this like an eight man rotation. Let's play our best guys. And uh, it is a two to three series. So sim casting again, this time it is in Dallas. Both teams are in Texas, but still home court advantage could play a huge factor here. Can we find a way to force a game seven? Maybe bring this back to Houston. Close back and forth game, but it looks like Dallas might be running away with it. And yeah, unfortunately, we are going to lose 108 to 142, but it's fine. We're getting somewhere. We made it to the second round after not making the playoffs at all. And we got the Atlanta Hawks beating the Oklahoma City Thunder in five games. So now it is our turn to get into the NBA Finals. So we did just decide to pretty much run it back. It's Jalen Green average 27, 21 from Amani Bates, 17, 17, 11, 11, 8. I think the only difference this year is we actually had a new starter in Usman Garuba instead of it being Jonathan Isaac. So that was kind of our new starter. And uh, we were the first year in the West. So, I mean, it is just kind of time to see if we can win this championship. So Dallas knocked us out last year. Uh, is it possible we're going to knock us out again? So, so many occur around against Dallas, and we are going to beat them in five. So, that's good. And now we get to play the Golden State Warriors, who have Steph, uh, Gortman, Kuminga, Marvin Bagley, Hayes, Moses Moody, Jordan Poole, and Gene Montero. So many occur around against Golden State. And Mission failed. We'll get them next time. It doesn't look like we are going to get our Detroit Rockets NBA Finals, man. That would have been so much fun. But unfortunately, we're not going to get it today. Detroit goes on to win the championship. But at the end of the day, I'm really happy with the team that we put together with Amani Bates, Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, Paulo Boncharo. I mean, it's just a nice-looking team. Um, I really wanted to see it make it all the way. But unfortunately, Golden State had different plans. And then Detroit goes on to win a championship. So Jalen Green's probably happy watching that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, though. Make sure you like if you did. But for now, this Crushables, I'm saying... Peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.